What is good, Greg Gang? We're actually here today. We're gonna go minnow trapping down at the creek. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using the minnows that we catch in the creek to actually try to go catch bass or catfish. I'm not exactly sure which one of those I'm gonna be catching. It's literally whatever bites. We're gonna be using them under a bobber as live bait. Now here's the minnow trap we're gonna be using. Just a simple little minnow trap. But as for bait, just gonna be using simple little pieces of white bread. I'm actually gonna go ahead and bait it up out here. I'm not by the creek right now, as you can tell by the gigantic mountains. But anyways, just gonna go ahead and bait it up now. That way, once I get down to the creek, I want it to bait it up. I can just stick it in the water, not worry about it, and come on my day. Now, I am only using one piece of bread. Usually, I like to use two, but since it is a little early in the season, the minnows aren't exactly the most energetic right now, so I'm not gonna need a ton of food to feed them. Let's just say that the minnows are gonna eat slow nowadays. The water in the creek's still a little bit cold. But anyways, guys, let's hey, jump onto the trapping shack on wheels. This is my little mule right here. We call it the trapping shack on wheels because, you know, I use it during trapping season in the winter, you know, trap coons and stuff. But then again, Today we're trapping minnows and it's still serving the purpose. Well, not right there, it about quit. But still, let's go. Okay guys, now we're down at the creek. I'm gonna try to zoom y'all in and show you some of the minnows. You can definitely see minnows. See right there, there's one right there. You can see some right out there just swimming. They look like little lines, that's all they really look like. But I'll just try to creep up on them. You can see, it. see them right there? Oh yeah, there they go, there they go. Those are actually some pretty big bluegill too. But whenever I look for a creek to minnow trap, that's what I look for. I just simply look in the water and see if I see minnows swimming around. And if I do, like we do in this case, that's all I need. That's the only green light I need to start minnow trapping. So I'm just gonna come back here to the mule, pick up the minnow trap, coming over here to the side, toss it in what I think is the deepest spot. That right there is right in the shade. It looks like it's in the perfect spot. We'll just leave it right there. Come up here, tie it down to something, maybe stake it down. And besides that, guys, if you look down there at the minnow trap, you can see some bread coming out. That's okay. That's just enough to get, you know, the minnows excited and stuff. And now after I tie it down to the bank, ready to go, boys. Now we just gotta wait about 24 hours. I'll come back tomorrow, collect the minnows, and then we'll go out there and actually try to catch something with them. Hopefully a big catfish or a huge bass. Okay, guys, this is actually the next day, and we're here to, you know, check the minnows. Oh, there they go. There goes a bunch. Oh, snap. There's a ton of minnows. Right here is actually the... Oh, wow. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. There's actually a fish. There was that big old bluegill who tried to swim straight through the minnow trap, but then, you know, he's just not big enough, so he couldn't go through. But anyways, let's come down here. Get the minnow trap and pull it on up and see what it got. Do we have anything? Oh, snap, man. You're kidding me. Bro, we legit got one minnow. Well, that's different. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's not what I expected, okay? This place is infested with minnows, but then we only got one once we actually trapped it. I'm gonna be 100% honest, guys. That's not what I expected. Well, now what do I do? Do I got water in here? Yeah, I got water in here. I mean, I guess I'll go ahead and put this minnow over here, and then I'll figure out what I'm gonna do next later. Like, 100%? Honestly, I thought I'd come in here and have about 20, but instead we just got this little tiny bluegill. Hey, that's not bad. However, this very well may be the eighth wonder of the world. How in the world is there that many minnows in this creek? And I literally only caught one. And I already threw the little excess bread that, you know, the minnows didn't eat back in there. And these guys were already over there eating on it. I'm going to try to get a little bit closer to the minnows so that you guys can truly see how many there are. But still, look at them. How in the world did I only catch one minnow? That truly blows my mind, guys. I've been minnow trapping for about five years, and well, that's not really that long, but still, I still consider myself an expert. But anyways, guys, with me being an expert, I think I got an idea. I think I know a pretty good way I can get more minnows. Now I know, I know, a lot of you guys may not want to see what I'm about to do, but if you remember in my last video, I actually went minnow trapping and put the minnows in this pool pond. And today, just so happens we have a shortage of minnows, I think I know where to get some. We're about to take them straight out of the pool pond. Now, don't think of it as we're about to go, you know, use our pets as bait. Because they're not our pets. The only ones that are actually our pets are the bigger bluegill. All the smaller bluegill are just there so that the bigger bluegill will have someone to flex on. Keep that in mind, guys. They're just supporting characters. So, I'm gonna come on in here, get about two or three. I'm not gonna take them all or anything. Just a few. Only what we need. And at the end of our fishing trip, if we don't use them all, we'll bring them back and put them in the pool pond. So, let me go ahead. Try to spook some of these minnows out because they do like to hide a lot. And see if I can get me a minnow here. There's one. Oh, this is hard, dude. I ain't even gonna lie. This is hard. <laughs> There's one. Did I get him? Nope, missed him. Where's he at? Where's the minnow at? He's somewhere close. Tell you what, they're pretty good at hiding for the little amount of cover they actually have here. I know there's some up under there. there oh, snap. There we go. There's one. I'm over here, right over here to my minnow bucket and put him in there. Hey, there's all kinds of them over here. There's one. Let's try to get him. Got him. Nope. Missed him. Got him. Nope. Missed him. Nope. I got him. Nope. Missed him. Never mind. Wow. I really don't know what I'm doing to a... Got him. Nope. Missed him. There's one. 
Yeah, there's one. Never mind. I didn't think I got him there for a second. So that right there, that makes three that we have in total. Two from the pool pond and that one really tiny blue gilt from inner trapping. I believe we'll try to get two more just in case. And don't forget, we can always just bring them back. Oh, there's one. I think I may have just killed it. That's five minnows right there. Four live ones and then one that I may have possibly just smashed with that rock. But don't worry guys, we'll use him first. Now we're just going to head on down there. We're going to go fishing. I've still actually got to set up my rods and everything. But I'll show you how I'm going to rig it. I'm going to do a live bait rig. One that's really popular for catfish, bass, crappie. Basically anything with live bait. Even bluegill. Okay guys, we're down at the pond right now. We have two fishing setups. Both of them are sprinting real. I know, I know. They're not exactly bait casters, but that's okay. This Sometimes if you tend to catch like a one pound catfish on a bait caster, it's not as dramatic, you know? But anyways, let me go ahead and show you how I'm rigging up. Now, I don't have a tripod. I'm just glad to set you down like that and hope that you don't fall off the trap shack on wheels. Now first things first, we're going to take off the KG rod stock right here and I want to tell you a little bit about the sale that actually ends tomorrow. Now if you don't know, on Kendall one.com slash shop for the last week starting monday we've been having a massive fishing sale and i'm talking 10 percent on all fishing stuff and just recently we released a ton of different fishing stuff as well like this fishing hat so that you won't get sunburned the fishing rod socks like i just said it comes black and blue in spinning rod and bait cast rod we have this right here this is the tackle box this is going to be my live bait box that i've been using and then whenever you open that up we also have these for sale these are just simple tackle boxes you know they got everything you need nothing that you don't they're waterproof so that all your stuff does doesn't get you know burnt and rusted at the moment i really don't have a ton in here but let me show you what we're going to be rigging up my rod with if you want to check out the sale you need to check it out because it ends tomorrow you can head on over to kennelgrave1.com slash shop or first link in the description go check out the sale guys you really may want to get something before it goes off sale now we're going simple we're going to be using a hook just a standard little you know live bait hook a bobber not too big but also not too small to where the minnow can pull it under and then we're also going to be using just a little sinker and i'm just going to reach in here come in here get the sinkers and now i'm going to set you back on the minnow bucket so that you can actually see how i rig up in action now first things first come in here get my little bait hook pretty simple just tie it on next i'm going to come in here with the sinker put about three inches above the hook come in here clamp that on with my kg pliers we also released them just some little kg pliers right there and got a bunch of fishing attachments inside that you can actually fold out it's like a multi-tool well it's definitely a multi-tool and then the bobber i'm going to say now this all depends on your depth and how what kind of fish you're fishing for and how deep they like to stay i'm gonna set mine about a foot and a half up just like that now i'm gonna come in here reach in my minnow bucket get the first minnow i can if i can oh there we go yep just a little bit of minnow and i'm just gonna hook him right through the bottom lip and out the top that way if nothing happens today and nothing eats this minnow we can just take him off the hook and put him right back in the pool pond and he'll be perfectly fine hopefully something eats him though let's be real now i'm gonna turn around here to the pond and go ahead and cast him in walk right over here there's a brush pile like right over there, so I'm gonna toss it beside of it. Maybe we can get a bass to come out of the pile to catch eat. Right about there. That should be good, guys. Now I'm just gonna set the rod down, come back here, rig up the second one, and now it's just a waiting game. We wait until one of those bobbers goes down and stays down. That means that a big bass or a big catfish has it. Oh, there he goes, there he goes, there he goes. He has it. He has it. Right here it is, right here it is. Got him. There he is. There he is, son. That didn't take too long, did it? This is why I use a little spinning reel, because this isn't the hugest bass in the world, yet he's still giving up a little bit of a decent fight. Well, maybe. He's not really fighting much right now. I don't know what's wrong with him. Oh, gosh. He's hung up a little bit, and he's, he's right up in the bank in the undercut a little bit, right here in some of this dead grass, but just a nice little LMB, guys. Here we go. Flip him up. Oh, that's not a bad one. Well, he's awfully skinny. I will say that. This is an awfully skinny bass right here. Big old mouth. He definitely should be fatter than he is. I just started fishing too. Just toss it right out there in the middle. Looked over. The bobber was just swimming like three inches under the water. I could see it moving. And that there, that's a sure sign that we got a little bass. Now, this guy right here is extremely skinny. And if I got to be honest, guys, I don't really understand why. Because there's bluegill insane in here. There's like a hundred of them. Probably more than that. It's just the only thing about the bluegill that's in this pond is they're a little bit too big for a bass this size to eat. It's going to take like a six pounder to eat one of these bluegills. But as for this little bass, I'm going to go ahead, toss him back in, and he can get back to doing whatever he was doing. There he goes. Perfect little toss in. He's probably just going to go down to the bottom and... Think about his life choices and probably regret every decision he's made today. It's okay, Thompson. It's okay. It's normal to get caught. I mean, let's be real, man. That's how you got in this pond in the first place. Okay, guys, here's what's happening. So as you saw, you know, I came in here and went fishing. I only caught one fish, only one bass, and that was really it. But unfortunately, I used like four minnows in the process. Like they kept falling off and stuff. So to make up for that, I'm actually back out here at the creek right now. Right out here at this little creek. I don't know if you can see any minnows in there right now. 
you definitely can, but uh, but yeah, I'm actually gonna go ahead, reset a minnow trap again, set this one right here, got it baited up with some dog food in there, but it's stinking pitch black, and I'm out here setting minnow traps. What else are you gonna do in Kentucky? You tell me. But anyways, guys, I'm just gonna get the minnow trap, look at the deepest spot, I think it's right there, set it down to the bottom, let it sink, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tie this rope right there to that tree, we'll come back tomorrow, check it, and then whatever we have left, whatever minnows we catch this time, we're actually gonna go back and put them in the pool pond, because you know, I did kind of take a few out earlier today to fish with. This actually the next day been about 24 hours a little bit less because i actually came in at night and we're down here at the minnow trap and i'm looking in here it's decently clear water i can actually see that we got a ton like you can see all kinds of stuff swimming around down there in the trap i'm gonna go ahead pull it oh oh snap oh my gosh do you guys see that there's a big snapping turtle dude like there's a stinking snapping turtle okay guys here's what's gonna happen i'm pulling up the trap Awesome, we got a bunch of minnows. The next video, as you know right now, it's actually a Saturday. Monday's video, we're gonna pick up right here and we're gonna get this turtle out of here. I don't know how we're gonna do it, but we're gonna stink and make it happen. Now we're gonna leave it alone here for a few minutes, but just remember guys, come back Monday, that's gonna be the next video. But anyways, here's what we did get right here. We got a few minnows in there, some big minnows too. We're just gonna go ahead, get some water in the bucket over there, and then we'll take these up and put them into their pool pond. These minnows here have actually never seen the pool pond before. But here we go, gonna get right down here to the creek, get some of the freshest water we can. Right down here, just... Super fresh. Yeah, there we go, that's plenty right there. But I'm gonna come on in here, get out the rest of the minnows, put them on in, the, in our bucket. And now for the rest of the dog food that they didn't eat, come right over here to the pond. Just toss it in, let the other blue you'll have some fun with it. Anyways guys, let's head on up to the pond right now. But here we go, we got the new members of the pool pond. We're gonna go ahead and dump them in all at once. So here you go, Abram, just go ahead, I'll let you dump them in. Introduce our boys to the new pool pond. Here's actually our current members. Of course, the three big bluegill, as always, and we only have a couple more minnows. We actually took more than I thought last time. Pouring them out. Here comes all of our new members. We got a few bluegill in there, a couple small bluegill, some big chub minners. I'm telling you, man, the chub minners, that one right there, that one's almost as big as the big bluegill we caught. Look at them. That's, that's, that's huge. And that turtle that we just saw in the creek, he was literally under the minnow trap. That turtle thought he was going to get an easy meal by just coming up and eating those fish, but what he really didn't realize is that they were in a cage. But that's exactly why that turtle was so close. He was thinking he's going to get a quick snack off these minnows. Since it is Saturday, it's time for the verse of the week. And this one is coming out of Psalms 37, 7. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. And do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. But what that verse is saying is that God is aware of the people who cheat to get what they have. And it's okay. But what God wants us to do is not worry about other people, but just think about ourselves and be patient so that we'll all get what we deserve. If we work hard for something... Trust in God that he will reward you. And if someone else cheats to get what they get, just kind of don't worry about them because that's, that's up for God to be the judge. You're, it's not your spot to be the judge. It's God's job. God's a good judge. And he's never wrong, I promise. But anyways, guys, don't forget to go over to kindlegradwell.com slash shop. Check out the sale. It runs out tomorrow. So if you want to buy something, it may be a good time to go ahead and try to do it now. Because starting Monday, everything goes back to full price. But anyways, guys, I tell you what, I will see you some Monday. Hashtag Jesus, hashtag Gregory.